What's going on, everybody? Nick Hamilton here at the Tech Lamert Black to the Future 2023 event here in beautiful Lamert Park, California. And of course, I have the distinguished honor to be next to this man. He is a Grammy Award winning producer, musician, composer, writer. I mean, the list goes on and on, but I'm gonna let him talk about that for a second. He's the one and only Terrence Martin. What's going on, man? man I'm, I'm, I'm blessed, man. We alive. Yes, sir. Everybody alive right here, so we alive. I'm, I'm good. Man, you look well. Thank you, man. I'm, I'm glad you. to see you out and about amongst the Thank people. You. I mean, that's not that's nothing oh, new yeah. to you. You always oh, out yeah. in the community. Especially over here. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. This is home turf right yeah. here. Yeah. First of all, I gotta say, man, I was bumping drones uh. the other week. And uh, that's still that's still a record. I still I have it my on my iPhone to this day. Ah, oh, thank you, thank um, you so much, man. Just talk to me about. I know you were like I said, you're a very accomplished musician, uh, producer, writer, creator, director. What is the difference for you between a producer and a musician? For those that may not know. Well, they're a, they're two totally different situations. Mm -hmm. They're two totally different thinking processes. Two totally different responsibilities two totally different ways of dealing with accountability of, on any level. They're not, they're not the same. Um, they're two totally different teachings and understandings. You know, a, as a producer that produces any situation, you usually know how to manage mm -hmm. different characters and spirits to get the best results for the mm -hmm. final mm -hmm. situation at hand. As a, if you're a great musician, you probably could play good music, right. you know. But, a, a, you know, it's so many different forms of, of, of a producer. You know, I, um, I like to call myself somebody that just knows how to get to the finish line, whether it's music, whether it's business, whether it's spiritual or emotional. That's kind of my, I don't know how I do what I do, but I, I do what I do, you know. And I, and I feel like every, I feel like I'm just getting started. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I'm just getting started. Yeah, absolutely, man. You have such an anointing for music. And I, yeah. I don't mean just instruments. I mean just yeah. the concepts. When you listen to a Terrence, Market, Terrence Martin rather record, or it's an album, as it were. You see, you hear the difference. You hear the sonics that are different. You hear the, the creativity. You allow the artist to be the artist. Yeah. What have some of the sessions been like for you? I know you've worked with uh, countless people, obviously Snoop Dogg, obviously Kendrick Lamar, and, and countless others. What have been? What What is the mindset when you go into a session? Because obviously these artists are not the same, but what is your mindset to still bring out that creativity that you have with your music? My, my mindset with a session is my same mindset to life. Like, uh, I grew up in a very free household, mm -hmm. um, the kind of household where we we, we had a we had a clear dialogue with my parents, very, mm -hmm. very clear, very straight up, respectful at all times, mm -hmm. but very clear. I was able if I didn't like something, I could say it, you know. Um, so, my way of treating life is every day is different. You know, the biggest ego in the room with them at the studio got to be the music. Mm -hmm. So every time I walk into a session, I don't know what to expect. All I know is keep my spirit clean and keep it smooth and, and be more of a student. If I listen to everybody that's there, I'll probably learn what to do next. Yeah. So, you know, I let the room and the session tell me what to do. But I never walk in there with a, with a premeditated thing other than I'm going to get the session done. I don't know how I'm going to do it. But if I sit and listen long enough, the artist will tell me what it needs to be done. Whether it's them not talking at all or them talking a lot. Mm. But whatever gauge, it'll tell me. Because I, I pay attention to the room. I pay attention to what they eat. I ask them what they like something. I bring things to the. I just want to get as a human. If I could kind of, as fast as I can, get to the human being of them, I could kind of dictate mm -hmm. how maybe I should go about my spirituality in that particular session that day to get it done. But I can't come in saying... I'm going to work with Herbie Hancock the same way I work with Snoop Dogg. Mm -hmm. That don't even make sense. Right, like exactly. when I'm working with Herbie, I'm just reminding him of his records, <laughs> honestly. Oh, that's great. I'm just playing what he played and just maybe some different things. But you know, so it's all different, man. But for sure, I'm I'm the lowest common denominator in those rooms. Mm -hmm. I'm just there being the vessel trying to make the shit go through to the finish line so our babies can eat. Absolutely, as you should. You li which leads me to my next question: production. Who was well, growing up? Who were some of the producers that you looked up to or felt like they inspired you to some degree to become the person that you are today? That's easy. That's easy. Teddy Riley, Battle Cat, DJ Quick, Dr. Dre, and Quincy Jones. Not mm -hmm. in that order. Right. Because it is no order. It is no order with art. I just mentioned names, but it is no order. Mm -hmm. But um, th those are the people that I that I pray to work with. And Herbie Hancock, mm -hmm. and my whole life, I, I sought after those people. Yeah. I found them. The creator always led me to them, right. 
But I, I meditated and prayed at 12 to work with Snoop Dogg, Herbie Hancock, and I, I, I just, I aimed my, I aimed my whole spirit to getting, because I, I believed if I got to these guys, it would help me. But when I got to them, what it did do is taught me a lot, mm -hmm. but it also let me know that you still got to do the work. You can't escape the work to success or to any, to even paying your bills on the first of the month consistently on time. Mm -hmm. You can't escape the work. Mm -hmm. You exactly. can't escape the work. Nah, true statement. I mean, look at the state of hip hop today. Obviously, you know, we, we know what the golden age was. We know the 2000s were and so forth. A lot of, a few artists that I talked to, even a few producers, you know, that I spoke with were like, hip hop is stagnant. It's stale. It's, there's no creativity. There's, there, there, it's almost as it were on life support. Where do you see hip hop and where, and if, it, that, if it is that way, where does hip hop need to go to get back to that freshness, to, to get that uh, elusiveness to the point where we get back to the creativity and get back to saying something? Hip hop is not stagnant. H hip hop is forever growing. Nothing is bigger than hip hop that grows that fast. Mm -hmm. um, that's, those are all matters of opinions that usually come from older uh, older people. Mm. Um, and I'm, I'm older, you know, but I, I don't think in those forms of art mm. at all. I think hip hop is forever growing. When you grow, you know, you, you, you're you growing at a different pace, it's different things. I think hip hop is more freer than it's ever been. I think hip hop is beautiful, but I do think, I think the competition has raised the bar where you have to be a little more creative to stick out right now. Mm. So you could be a part of the problem that continue on talking shit about it's not growing, mm -hmm. or you could fall back and get your pen and pad out and write some hot shit and win. Mm -hmm. I'd rather I write some hot shit and win. So I embrace it all. I believe that I can't embrace all the greatness without embracing what some would call L's or strikes or whatever. Mm -hmm. I look at those as hard learning, but everything is a win in life. So. I don't look at hip hop like it's stagnant because it's not stagnant. Mm -hmm. You can't tell 21 Savage and Drake that. You can't tell Lil Durk that. Exactly. What you mean? You better check those charts. And all that art shit, yeah, that's deep. That's that's cop out. You better check those numbers and see what hip hop is doing. Just because it, it, just because it's not the kind of hip hop you like, mm -hmm. that don't mean shit. That's closed minded old shit. That's why some of the culture slows down because of those type mm -hmm. thoughts. Being open and being accepting and then saying, how do I grow within? And you know, um, you know, the master teacher Herbie Hancock always teaches me is that you can find beauty within every problem. So if you think something is a problem, instead of looking at the problem, it, it would be in your best health interest. And so your family, so you don't die of a premature stroke to hurry up and find the beauty and learn the lesson from it. Absolutely, I mean, well said. I, I think hip hop is different. And I think sometimes different doesn't always be, is always receptive to those who are not accustomed to uh, change, you know what I mean? And I, I like the way that you think, I like the way that you, you, you disseminate that, because I think that's very, very important. And not to say that everybody thinks like that, but you yeah, know, obviously, and, and, obviously it's, and, it's a certain you know, few. It is, I think it's beautiful when people don't think like that, but mm -hmm. I, I'll say this, life is short. It's too short to put boxes around your own eyes. We mm -hmm. already got shit up, up in front of us that everybody putting in front of us any damn way. So why put up another roadblock in your own face? Open, be open, it's oh, okay. Yeah. Be all the way open. and. When I mean be open, I mean mm -hmm. work. We should all, all of us need to work harder. Myself, as I'm even talking to you, I'm talking to myself. We all need to work harder at looking at alternative situations in different ways of looking at things. Because to, to some, the world is closing up. And that's when you really should be looking at things all kind of different ways, quick to find some form mm -hmm. of joy within your heart. Yeah, that's I how I look at it. That's what I recommend to the closed-minded person, too. <laughs> Straight up. There you go. Two quick things before I let you get on out of here, man. We're here at Tech Lamert, obviously, Black to the Future. What does that mean for Terrence Martin to be Black to the Future and, 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 and as far as the technology of, of uh, the music is concerned? Technology is a beautiful thing. Me and Herbie Hancock always talk about, me and the master teacher, Herbie Hancock, always talk about technology, and he's actually got me more deeper involved because he's 80-some years old, and paying so much attention to the future and what's mm. going to happen and what is happening. So, you know, and, and doing that is, is I, I love technology. I love technology. I'm, I'm, I'm pro science. Okay, there you go. You know, but I'm pro creator. All right. You know, I'm pro science, meaning like I love the way things work. Hey. You know, and I love things that are going to enhance us and help us. Um, I don't look at things that, you know, everybody's scared of AI that's going to work against <laughs> us and those things like that. I think, uh, you know, once again, my mindset is to learn how to work with. 
Yeah, I was, and that's it's funny that you bring up the whole AI thing because there's a lot of controversy behind that. Some are yeah. pro, some are con. Obviously, with the, with the actors and the writers, but also in the music industry. I know Snoop had brought that up, and a few yeah. other people had brought that yeah. up about this Now, what's going thing. on with the writers, and uh, I mean, that that's, that's the, it's, it's time. You know, and the, the music people need to stand stand in line, too, because yeah. the thing about, we've been getting fucked up deals. <laughs> <laughs> we've been getting these these deals. Mm -hmm. we, you know, we and we and we been dealing with slave catchers mm -hmm. that look like us in these companies as well, too. So we've been getting these deals. Mm -hmm. So you know, um, I think what, what what the music side should be looking at this is we should learn. Tech Lamert, Black to the Future 2023. I'm Nick Hamilton. We'll be learning. Tech Lamert, Black to the Future 2023. I'm Nick Hamilton. We'll be to follow suit with mm -hmm. that and stand the line so we all, our children and grandchildren, could be more profitable. You know, even if we put ourselves on the mm -hmm. line right now, it, 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 it's it's much spiritual worth it later on. You know what I'm saying? But uh, but going back to the whole technology thing, what what it means to be here is being ahead of uh, ahead of it. Yeah, yeah. Everybody here wants to be ahead. Everybody here is brave. Nobody stands mm -hmm. in fear here. Yeah. First of all, we in Lamar Park. If you, I'm from I'm from over here. Yeah, yeah. I'm Ooh. from over there, and this was a vacation. <laughs> you, you, you you know what I'm saying? Yeah, oh, so, I dig it. I'm so, down the street, bro. So yeah, I already, you, you yeah, 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 so, I already know. Yeah. So being the fact that everybody's here on some black tech mm -hmm. to the future shit yeah. is the flyest shit in the universe right now in Lemur Park. Yeah. This is like Lemur Park meets the world. This is how the world's gonna look. And look at this, man. Like like you would know so many black people was so in the tech by what they say, all this fear shit. But look at this. This is soulful. Yeah. And we got all walks of life down here, but the brothers and sisters is here. Yeah, it's a synergy They're here. here. It's a synergy. Yeah. It's hype. It's beautiful. We got beautiful kids down here. We got bomb music. You know, we got the homies down here, and everybody standing on one accord to try to see what's up for the future, for what's yeah. tomorrow. I, I love it here because I, 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 I don't believe too many people here honor the rear view. And I like when you're looking forward and you're standing up. And this is what Lamert taught me how to do. So it, it wouldn't be no other way without having this beautiful Black to the Future situation right here in Lamert Park. Lamert Park beats the world, 43rd and Degnant till it's over. And that's this, it's just real out here. It's beautiful. Real quick, man, you being from L.A., I'm going to have to ask you this now. The Lakers, come up, upcoming NBA season. You got LeBron, 21st year. You got Anthony Davis. Can he stay healthy? You know, you got them Clippers across the hall. What What are your expectations this year in the NBA, especially when it comes to the Lakers? I'm so pro LA. As long as you winning from LA, you you that like ain't I, I can't like you know I'm from the soil, so I, I can't be separating no LA shit like that. If the Lakers win, we on. The Clippers win, we on. But we LA all the day. I just don't want nobody else to win but LA. Okay. Period. All right, there you have it. The one and only, the producer extraordinaire, the musician himself. Man, one and only Terrence Martin from right here in Los Angeles here at Tech Lamert. Black to the Future 2023. I'm Nick Hamilton. We'll be right back. Nick Hamilton. Nick Hamilton. Black, 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 black.